everyone. Welcome to our service today and happy 2021. Here's hoping that this is a better year. And we want to begin today by uh, celebrating the God who is worshipped not only by us in this place, but by saints all around the globe as they gather together to sing praises to our great God. So let's offer this praise to him. This is A Million Saints. signs and wonders, your voice is light and thunder, your glory burns in every star. You flood the earth with beauty, I see your walls around me, oh God, how wonderful you are. So I fall down with a million saints, lift up my hands and say your
church is rising up with fire that can't be stopped and holy holy is the cry of saints and sinners reconciled sing sing it out let the earth resound for the king is here the king is here shout shout it out for the hope we found for the king is here the king is here and holy holy is the cry that floods the heavens fills the skies from the earth unto the throne eternal praise to him belongs sing sing it out let the earth resound for the king is here the king is here shout shout it out for the hope we found for the king is here the king is here Would you bow with me and let's pray and we'll receive and move into our time of communion. Father, we are so grateful to be able to come before you and to take these elements of our communion as we do each week. This bread and this juice representing your body and your blood. And as we have just sung of you being our king and the one who has come to meet us to save us and is now reigning and ruling as king, God, we recognize that that is the case for Jesus, that he does reign and rule because he chose to lay himself down and offer himself in sacrifice to us on the cross. And God, it is because of that that he is now raised up and that he is now king in our hearts, king in our world, and, and the one that we can follow. And so as we take this communion today, we're reminded of that sacrifice. We're reminded that when we sing of you as being king, that we recognize the cost that comes with that. And so we do choose uh, and come before you and bow, you, bow before you as king of our lives. We do that with gratitude, uh, knowing you're faithful to us, offering our faithfulness to you. We do that in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning and Happy New Year, church family. I am here this morning to pray for our offering so that we can give together. So if you would pray with me, we will receive this morning's offering. Lord, we're beginning a new year. Lord, we're coming off of a year that for many has been uh, a, a real challenge in a lot of ways. But Father, we, we move forward, um, God, with, with a sense of trust and of faith, Lord. Um, God, that you are still caring for us. Lord, that, that you have purpose and you have uh, intention behind everything that we experience. And Lord, because you alone are capable of directing things uh, in a manner that is good, Lord, we trust you with our resources. Father, left to ourselves, we will often make a mess of things. But Lord, with you, all things are possible. So we trust you, Lord, and we give you what we have today in the hope that you will make the best of it in Jesus name. Amen. The opportunities to give are coming across your screen right now so take a look at those. Uh, I want to share a couple of brief announcements with you guys. First of all um, we have our year with Jesus that is beginning this week. That is a weekly devotion series that we're doing together as a church. Uh, if you have not yet signed up for that we would encourage you to do so. You can sign up by visiting our website and clicking on the banner that says a year with Jesus. If you have more questions, you can email marty at marty at ccto.org. And the, uh, the binders that we're using that, that you're going to be putting your devotions in are available for pickup on Sunday mornings. Um, that is coming up this year, so we're really excited about that. Be, please do uh, join us with the Year with Jesus. And then secondly, we want to make sure that you guys are aware that our youth ministry programs are on schedule to continue. In January, we're going to be resuming a high school group on Tuesday the 12th and middle school group on Wednesday the 13th with our brand new youth pastor, uh, Anthony Malone, who will be joining us in the coming weeks here. So we're really excited about that. Uh, if you have students who are participating in that, uh, let them know. We will be resuming on the 12th and the 13th. That's it for our announcements this morning. I'm going to pass it over to Marty today, who has our message. Well, as we get started today, I wanted to let you know that this sermon is going to be a little bit different. It's really more of an announcement followed by a short sermon that talks about that announcement itself. And over the last few weeks, many of you have heard the announcement about a new program that we're doing for 2021 that starts today called A Year with Jesus. And I want to take a moment and explain a little bit about that program. You know, it's been such an incredible joy for me over the last few years to be able to lead the soul care ministries here at CCTO. And soul care is our ministry that emphasizes our spiritual growth in relationship with God. It encourages things like spiritual disciplines and really speaks to the ways that we connect and grow in that time that we spend with God. And over the last few years, we've done a number of, number of different devotional programs that help in that. We started with The Vine, did that for a number of years, then the Sabbath year, and then last Christmas we had our Advent journal, and this past Easter, our Lent journal. And so A Year with Jesus is our new emphasis for 2021 that helps in the way that we spend time in devotion with God. And so what is that? Well, it's a series of 52 weekly devotions that will be coming out throughout the year. They're all taken from the Gospels, and they look at the life of Jesus. And a new devotion will be sent out each Sunday throughout the year. And they'll look like this. It's a simple half sheet, front and back, with some space for journaling. And what we're challenging you to do with it is to set aside a time each week to spend time with God using this devotion as a guide. And the challenge at the start is for 30 minutes. Now, for some of you, this will be very easy, and you might spend more time than that. For some of you, this will be a little bit of a stretch, maybe it's something that's a little bit new for you. But I promise you, if you commit to that, you'll grow into that time frame and probably start to spend even more time. Now, these devotions themselves, they're not designed just for Bible study, for gaining new information. So you're not reading the story and just answering some questions about it. Now, you will definitely learn some things new, but what these devotions are designed for is a way for you to meet with Jesus, to help guide you into a time of reflection and prayer, to literally walk with Jesus throughout the year. You're going to be challenged to interact with the stories a little bit differently than you're used to, and you're going to be challenged towards some different ways to pray. 
Now, we're providing a notebook as well for those of you that want it. If you want to keep your de uh, devotions together all in a certain place, you can have this. And because there's this journaling aspect, it allows you to keep them together and be able to refer to them throughout the year. Now, as of right now, we have 91 people and counting that have signed up for that, which is something that I'm so excited about. And it points to one last thing about this announcement. This is primarily an individual practice. It's something that you're going to be doing, spending time one-on-one -on -one with God. But any time a large group of people from a community get together, then we look forward to and anticipate the things that God is going to do, not only with us as individuals, but the way he'll work in us as an entire community. And I truly believe that as we as a community spend time looking together at the life of Jesus throughout an entire year, it will impact our community. We're encouraging our small groups to participate in a simple way, really, uh, maybe just once a month, setting aside a period of time uh, in your small group that you give the opportunity for people to just share some of the things that they're learning. And then throughout the year, we're going to be doing some things to encourage this as well, really to keep this at the forefront of our minds. And now I want to move on from that announcement and talk really about why. Why will we do this year with Jesus? Well, you know when you experience something that shakes up your world a little bit, that opens your eyes to something new and kind of changes things for you going forward. And it doesn't have to be necessarily dramatic things. It can be very simple things as well. And we probably all have these experiences, especially when we're younger, that changes things a little bit going forward. A couple examples from my own life, starting with music. You know, growing up, my family, we were a John Denver, Olivia Newton-John, uh, Barry Manilow, Kenny Rogers sort of family. And we listened to those things on 8-track cassette all the time, which dates me a little bit, and some of you probably don't even know what an 8-track was. Now, the edgiest thing that we would listen to would be something like the Beach Boys, and even then, that was only every once in a while. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with any of that. In fact, I still love John Denver to, to this day. I know so many of his songs, I can sing them by heart, knowing all the lyrics. Not something that I'll do for you right now. But in about sixth grade, my perspective on music started to change a little bit as I started to listen to a little bit more of kind of some alternative rock stuff. And I remember buying my very first two cassette tapes at a warehouse record store, which of course doesn't exist any longer today. My first two cassettes, they were Missing Persons, Spring Session M, and The Stray Cats, self-titled de debut. And I loved these things, listened to them all the time, and really kind of changed my perspective on music going forward, and, and it's something that I've really followed ever since. I could say the same thing about movies. I remember seeing Star Wars in the movie theater as a little kid, and that completely blew my mind. And it's probably the place where my love of movies started and has stayed with me ever since. I remember seeing a couple of different action movies in the theaters, Aliens and Terminator 2, both by James Cameron. And they blew my mind on what an action movie could look like. And I continue to have a love of action movies today, even some of the cheesy ones. But there's deeper things as well. I remember my first time experiencing different cultures on some more extreme mission trips that we were taking with the youth group at the time. I remember how that changed my perspective and opened my eyes to a little bit about new things related to God. And it changed my perspective on how I saw people in general as well. I can think of some, some specific times in my own faith development. I remember hearing Brennan Manning speak at college and it altered the way I viewed God. And that really has stayed with me and carried with me throughout my life. I remember a time about 15, 20 years ago going through a, a real transition in my time of faith. And I remember reading a book called The Divine Conspiracy, written by Dallas Willard. And in many ways, that book both ruined and saved my relationship with God. And it's had a, a big influence in altering my journey with God going forward. And just giving some of these examples, the simple ones and the stronger ones, you can probably think of some own things, of your own things in your life as well. Well, why say all of this? Well, I do that because meeting Jesus, having encounters with him like this, it's really life-changing. And we see this happening all the time in the Gospels. People would encounter Jesus in the pages of the Bible, and we see their lives altered often radically. They are met with this love and this grace in a new way. 
And when they do that, it's something that they've never experienced before, and it changes them. But it's not just back then. Jesus continues to do this in us today. Some of you might have what we sometimes call a conversion story. You meet Jesus, it impacts you, you give your life to him, and it completely changes you going forward. But it doesn't have to be just one of those single moments. In fact, meeting Jesus in, is an ongoing thing that we continue, uh, it, it continues to happen as we grow with him. And that's what's supposed to happen in our faith as we continue to encounter Jesus. Now, there's a number of ways that these encounters might happen, but one of those is the times that we spend with Jesus, looking at the stories in the life of the Gospels and allowing him to speak to us and change us in these times. You know, a little over a year ago, I went through something called the Ignatian Spiritual Exercises. And I won't bore you with the details at all, but it was basically a daily time spent in prayer and examination, mainly through the life of Jesus that took about 10 to 11 months to complete it. And it was such a great experience. Very, very challenging for me personally. And it was from that experience that I decided I'm um, wanting to do this year with Jesus. And I wanted to do it because I saw how incredibly valuable it is to simply spend an extended period of time examining the life of Jesus. And more, more importantly, even than that, allowing Jesus to examine you. And so briefly, I want to just talk about a couple of the reasons for this. The two things that I really believe that if you commit and engage to this throughout the year, that will happen in your own life. And one is incredibly simple. It will lead you to grow in your relationship with Jesus. See, recently we spent a few Sundays looking at the teachings of Jesus in John chapter 15. And it was a part of, of a larger sermon series that Joe did in John 14 to 17. And in John 15, Jesus invites us to abide and remain in him. And he uses this metaphor of a branch, that's us, staying connected to the vine, Jesus. Now, I'm not going to read all of that, but in the midst of this passage, Jesus says this, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. It's really a simple statement, but it's also incredibly profound and very impactful. Jesus has offered his love to us, and he invites us to remain in that love, to experience it, to have it be a guiding force in our lives. And this is an invitation from Jesus to relationship with him. You know, I mentioned uh, Dallas Willard in The Divine Conspiracy earlier, and he says in that book this, he says, the personal presence of Jesus with individuals and groups that trust him was soon understood by Jesus' first students to be the practical reality of the kingdom of God now on earth. See, the practical reality of God's kingdom, of what it means to be Christ's follower, is that Jesus promises to be present with us, even within us. And we have the chance throughout our lives to grow in our abiding and our remaining in him. Now, there's so many things that Jesus points to in John 15 that comes from this remaining and abiding. When we do that, it says that we receive and we recognize his love for us, that he works on our hearts, that he works on our character in an effort to transform us more into his image. We grow in our obedience, especially our obedience in terms of loving others. We're used by God to bear fruit, and our friendship with Jesus deepens. All this happens as we grow in relationship with him. Now, there are a number of ways that we can abide and remain in Jesus, as he calls us to in John 15. But one of those is to sit with his teachings, to sit with the stories of his life, and use them as a means to enter into silence and solitude and prayer. And that's the focus and one of the main purposes of a year with Jesus. The first thing that happens, if you'll commit to this throughout the year, is that you'll grow in your relationship with Jesus. Now, the second reason that we do this is to be challenged and transformed. It says here that these are 52 devotions for remaining, reflecting, and transformation. See, here's the thing. The end result of our faith the work that God does in us through our relationship with him is our transformation. 
It is to become more like God in our character and as a result in our action as well. And that's really one of the great teachings that we see in the work of Paul. He says in Romans, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In Ephesians chapter 4, he says to put off your old self, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And then in Ephesians chapter 5, he challenges us to follow God's example as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. See, God desires to transform us, to make us more like him. And he does that through the relationship that we have with him, the abiding and the remaining. And then Jesus himself becomes the example of who God wants to transform us into, what he wants to make us be like. So as a people that follow Jesus, really the pursuit of our lives is to grow in relationship with him, to become more like him, and to follow him more closely. And to do that is incredibly, incredibly challenging. Miroslav Volf is a great theologian and teacher, author of probably the best book that I've ever read, Exclusion and Embrace. And I heard him say something lately that has really stuck with me. He was talking about his concern for where he sees the church today. And he said that he fears that Jesus has become a moral stranger to us. That Jesus has become a moral stranger to us. And this is important. He's not talking about the world out there, about non-believers or whatever you want to call it. He's talking to and about churchgoers, about us. He went on to say that the reason for this is because the things that were of such a concern and importance to Jesus are not the issues that are of central concern for us. And what we do focus on and what we find to be so important don't happen to be so for Jesus. See, Jesus is incredibly challenging. His ways are often contrary to the ways of the world and even our very own tendencies that we hold so dear to. Jesus didn't care about things like appearances or possessions or religious rules or power or success or safety, political or national affiliations or social standing. And yet those things often define us and they often shape our priorities. We can even tie these things somehow to our faith. We spiritualize them so that they take on somewhat of an importance that have absolutely nothing to do with following Jesus. And in some ways, we almost create our own religion, our own faith. Jesus did care about some, some different things, though. He cared about servanthood, about generosity, gratitude, contentment, our inner habits, our interior character that then influences our actions. He cared about the marginalized, about humility, and faithfulness, about obedience, about making peace, about being people that actually make peace, about forgiveness, about loving others, and he cared about sacrifice. And let's be honest, these are not our go-tos as people. We have to grow into these things. And here's the deal. I promise you, if you spend a year with Jesus in this way, you will grow and you will be challenged. I can think of plenty of times in my own life where when I'm spending time in the story of, of the life of Jesus, I'm convicted of something about myself, an interior attitude that I hold or a certain level of selfishness that I'm holding on to and a way that that reveals itself in my relationships or in how I spend my time or set my priorities. And when this happens, when Jesus reveals one of these things to me, he graciously and gently reveals it. And he challenges me to grow, to change, to become more like him. And that's what's happening in these moments of transformation. We're being shown the places in our lives where we are not like Jesus, where we need to grow into that. And when that happens, Jesus carefully, because he's always gracious with us, he works in our hearts so that we can be transformed. 
So that's why we do this year with Jesus. You'll grow in relationship with him. You'll discover even more his love for you. He'll transform you through the time that you spend looking at the Gospels, and you'll discover even more the joy of living with him. Because that's the thing, these changes that Jesus works out in our hearts, in the end, they end up being for our good. You find that the challenge and the process was actually worth it, even if it was difficult, even if in the end it changes your world. 52 devotions, 52 weeks, 52 opportunities to set a time aside for quiet with God, 52 opportunities to meet with the Jesus who loves you, who invites you to remain and abide in him. So what do you do now? Well, mainly, you sign up. The first devotion is available now, and new ones are going to come out each Sunday throughout the year. The notebooks are available. You can pick one up anytime here at church. And again, like I said, that first devotion is available as well. We'll have them printed out each week. We'll email them out, and they will always be online. We encourage you to really set a time and to set a day and a place. It's so important to help make this a regular practice. You don't have to be legalistic about it, and you can allow for some flexibility, but the more you commit to it as a discipline, a time, a day during the week, and a place, the more that will take hold in your own life. Now on the email with this video, there's a larger information sheet that gives more details on a year with Jesus. There's also a link to sign up, and there is the first devotion. So check out that information and contact me if you have any questions, and please sign up. If you have any questions now or as the year goes on, I would really ask that you would speak to me or any of the staff. You know, one of my great joys is talking with people about their process of growth in their lives with God. The ups and downs with it, really kind of walking through the questions, the joys, the struggles, all of those things, whatever comes up. I love helping walk through that with people. So please, at any time, please feel free to contact me and know that I'm available. And finally, last thing, my hope for all of you that at some point during this year, you will have a new encounter with Jesus, one that changes your perspective, one that shakes you up a little bit as you hear or see or experience, experience something for the very first time. But even more than that, my hope is that you'll grow in prayer, that you'll grow in how you spend time in God's presence, and that you will experience the joy of growing into deeper relationship with the God that invites you to abide and remain with him. My hope is that this is a great journey for you, and I so look forward to taking it with all of you together. Would you bow with me and pray? Father, we are so grateful that you have made yourself known to us in your son Jesus, that you've opened the door to an incredible relationship and life with him, and God, we're grateful that Jesus is with us, within us, walking with us throughout our lives, and that you have invited us to remain and abide in you. And God, we do ask for this year that it would be a time of growth, that for each person individually as they spend time looking at these stories, meeting with Jesus, spending time in prayer, that you would uh, speak to us and work in each of our hearts. And then our community here at CCTO as a whole, that we would grow together as well that looking at the life of Jesus, God, that it would maybe even start to change and alter some of our own priorities, that the things of Jesus would become the important things in our own lives, and the things that aren't important, we would start to set those aside. God, we're so grateful for that. We invite you in and ask that you would meet with us as we journey with you. We thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. To bring peace, to be loved, to be nearer to us, and you come to bring life, to be light, to shine brighter in us, so be man, you will, God with us.
are standing in your glory. You are here. You are holy. We are standing in your glory, Lord. Our deliverer, you are Savior. In your presence we find our you. Have a great week. I encourage you to sign up again for a year with Jesus, and we really look forward to going on this journey with you throughout 2021.